This is Adele from EDM Tour here with Sean Tyus, who is a trance music producer and DJ. Good to see you again, Sean. It's good to be back and good to see you again, too. I can't wait for your show tonight. Uh, I know recently you've been playing a lot of Future Sound of Egypt for 100 dates. Uh, can you tell me a few of the places or the places that you have played? And just so the people that don't follow trance that might be watching this video on EDM Tour will understand what you've been up to, where you've been, and maybe tell me a good story about one of the dates. Sure. Uh, well, I mean, uh, for the future side of Egypt, uh, sadly, it was I was actually just this week supposed to go to, to, to Tunisia for the Tunisia one, but there's been, uh, of course, you know, t terrorist attacks from ISIS going on there, and uh, yeah, rocking an American passport. Uh, I think it's probably a, probably a good thing that they cancelled that event. <laughs> So they did cancel that whole event, sadly. But uh, I was at the Poland uh, Future Center of Egypt 400 uh, just last weekend, and that was awesome. Poland is an amazing vibe, and the venue was fantastic, and just, just the clubbers were just really up for it. So that was a great event, and uh, it was just in Ibiza um, this past uh, Tuesday before that, in Calgary um, two weekends ago. So it's going pretty fast. <laughs> and then, I mean, this is just the, the start of the weekend this weekend, so there's Toronto tonight and uh, Kansas City tomorrow, and then Montreal to wrap it up on Sunday. So yeah, pretty grueling for the last last two weeks, and then yeah, it's not gonna let up anytime soon. So yeah, ready for a good end of the summer, I guess. Tonight, your show at Red is named after your radio show, Degenerate, which has about over, maybe about 32 or 34 shows right now? I think we are at, I think tonight's 32, you're right. Why did you wanna make the Toronto show a Degenerate show? We've been trying to do as many degenerate uh, branded shows as possible. It's it's important to build now because obviously De degenerate is a new brand for me. So um, it's been going on since basically November of last year, and it's been going really really good. And the and the feedback's been fantastic, overwhelmingly positive on it. Um, but now it's just a matter of making sure the shows are all branded up correctly. You know, of, of course, with matching visuals to. to uh, playing behind and in front of me while I play and, uh, and matching the radio show vibe and um, yeah, I, I, it, any chance I get to actually have a branded Degenerate show is more than fine by me. You have a show coming up soon in New York City alongside with Giuseppe for his go on air yeah. and New York City is a very special place to you. Tell yeah. me how you feel about being put on that lineup. Well, I've done a go on air once over at Ministry of Sound a couple months ago. That was awesome too. And I play with Giuseppe quite often. I see him, yeah, I see him almost every two months, I think, or so, or sometimes even more often. But uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome to play in hometown New York. I mean, I, I love going back to New York to play. It's uh, it's like a homecoming of sorts. You know, friends, even my parents come out. Do you plan on doing something big for a milestone of Degenerates Radio Show, like when you get to 100 or maybe 150? When I get to 100, absolutely. Um, I think 50 might be a little too soon, uh, but definitely 100 and definitely maybe even 150 if the momentum is, is still showing. Um, obviously doing it a show every 50 years means you're basically doing, basically doing it every year. Um, so we see how it is at 150. I did it for, I did it with Titanium at 100, and that was pretty awesome. I got some really, uh, yeah, really, really cool lineups for that. So I have to outdo that absolutely when I get to Degenerate 100. Any ideas where you'd want to do your first date for that type of tour? Oof. <laughs> it's, it's really hard to say which, which date you could do it first because you, you more or less you're dealing with your schedule and you're dealing with, you know, where... And, and also some cities can only do, can only handle... Okay, so some cities will only book you um, or book a party a month out and some cities will yeah. do it six months out. So basically it's just going to come down to how the, how the, how the dice get rolled. But if you could pick any place and you, it would work. Well, uh, <laughs> let's go with Buenos Aires. I think that would be the coolest place for me to, to do it the most appropriate because it is my favorite place in the world to play. Awesome, yeah. awesome. You've mentioned before that you have some roots in drum and bass and that you might make an alias and start going and making some tracks under that genre. Have you started or have you thought about that anymore? I have started doing the production. Um, I wouldn't say roots. I was definitely into it before I was even into trance music when I was younger, when I was probably in, uh, I guess, uh, mid-teens back in high school. I was really, really into the old school drum and bass and jungle stuff. Um, and now lately, you know, obviously in the last couple of years, drum and bass has come leaps and bounds in terms of production technique and skills. And that's what's really intrigued me about the whole sound and really impressed me and inspired me. And that particular aspect is also being, and you can hear it, especially these days, being reworked into my trance stuff as well. Uh, you've done a date or maybe a couple alongside your own brother, Ryan Tyus. And what's it like playing dates with your family on the same lineup? Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, me and my brother, we were we got into DJing 
And I, I mean, obviously I went down the production route, but um, we, we got into DJ around the same time when I was still living in New York. And uh, we lived nearby a, a local record store, Caffeine. It was literally two blocks away, which was really cool. This was when we, when we still had record stores. For you youngins, they actually sold vinyl in a shop. Oh my God. And uh, yeah, you guys wouldn't remember that though, because that doesn't exist anymore. But it was amazing, because living so close to an iconic shop like that, especially from the rave scene, um, I'm sure I'm sure even up here you guys have heard of Caffeine. And uh, they also made really cool pants back then. I, I was, a big, was a big fan of big raver pants with cargo pockets and everything. Awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, that was back in the day. So whenever, I, I think, it's been a while since I've played with Ryan, but um, yeah, we should definitely do it again soon. <laughs> uh, do you have any great stories or memories from being in Toronto? It doesn't have to be a date you played in particular, just maybe a reason you came here, but a nice story about Toronto, why you might love it here? I mean, I've been coming to Toronto now at this point for what? I'm probably the better part of like seven years, I guess. Uh, I think the first time I played in here, uh, played in Toronto was for, for one of the ASOTs. I think it was for ASOT, I guess, ASOT 350 that they did it at government. And it, that was my first experience in Toronto. That's not a bad way to start off. Um, and what I love about Toronto is it's just, you could tell it's a, it's a, it's a club that's very, very well informed. Um, it's a, you could tell most of them used to wear raver clothes to, to raise out, out to the proper parties like Labor of Love. And um, yeah, it's just, it's a proper scene here. It's a proper East Coast scene here. Very similar to the New York scene, but the, the New York scene, of, obviously like Toronto, has changed quite a bit. It's not so ravey, ravey anymore, but um, you know, every, everything changes and grows up. So uh, yeah, the Toronto scene, like I said, is, you can tell it's historically, you know, well-informed and they're up for it. As the Toronto Trans family is probably looking really forward to this one tonight. <laughs> And I was wondering if you had anything you wanted to say directly to your fans that you can say right into the camera if you like. Sure, yeah. I hope you have enjoyed the set tonight. And uh, yeah, just, uh, yeah, hope it didn't hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us and for having the time to talk with us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. And I hope to see you back here really soon after tonight. So do I. And make sure that you all follow Sean Tyus on social media and also check out EDM Tour for the latest in news, contests, events and other EDM updates in the Toronto area.